G'day, I'm Ash, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a bit of a Talking Heads video. Featuring the G91YS, one of my favourite fights, at least before the SU-25, before the Dragons, before the Big 21s and, the, and all the premium aircraft were added. This was one of the most stable aircraft back in the day, and now you see basically none of them. And I'll tell you why that is, no countermeasures. A subsonic airframe and a 9Bs. While it has fantastic cannons, it's got a predecessor which was recently introduced, which doesn't even have air-to-air -air missiles, and it's basically the same aircraft, so <laughs> it's quite unusual. Anyway, I'd like to thank the channel members for joining the channel, um, as recently I've got rid of the Patreon account due to Patreon being a bit of a kitty fiddler uh, supporting platform. Moving on. Um, I think that, you know, my, I've had a good break. Uh, there'll be an update video on that soon. Essentially, I fucking hate War Thunder. Coming back to it is, is a bit of a pain, especially after a week of play. And so I did my top 10 videos last week and scheduled them, and it's been fantastic to see the response to that. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out in the, in, in the, in the description or in the little card thing above. But BR Compression. And I wanted to specifically talk about how they modify vehicles based on statistics. So if you didn't know, Gaussian Entertainment, the way that they balance things, they have an internal algorithm. And that internal algorithm decides the fate of many of the vehicles, many of your favorite vehicles. Obviously, it takes into consideration player kills, player deaths, how long someone's played a vehicle, how many wins, losses, and everything in your service record, and probably a bit more data, goes into feeding an algorithm which then determines a battle range and obviously what tier slash you know how effective the vehicle is doing so the vehicle gets matched up against all of its other vehicles that have been changed and the issue with the way that they run the things isn't the fact that they're changing specific data on vehicles which shouldn't be changed it's the lack of transparency when it comes to actually determining why they are moving a vehicle up and down. They just go, here guys, we're announcing changes, and don't go into any further explanation as to why. They don't give us, oh, this vehicle's performing well because it's earning too much silver lines, or the player's doing really well in this vehicle because they're using it effectively as a, as a bomber, or in ground forces, it's wiping out everybody, so we decided to up BR it. Right? There, there, is a, there is a huge amount of consideration into what or why or how come, and they're not exactly going to give away that data, as that'll basically tell the players what's going on, what, what's happening, who's doing what, and what is being abused currently. So, in reality, it's, 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 it's a no-win-win situation. We get a, a basically a lackluster BR change sort of spreadsheet, which we have to go through manually to see what they're screwing up, and... In the end, they don't even consider vehicles that haven't had their data changed at all. One of the key examples of that is the G91YS. Barely anyone flies this machine because it is such a, well, mediocre machine these days that it kind of gets overlooked. And yeah, it's an okay machine, but it really does suffer when you're fighting things that have, well, countermeasures, AIM-9Ls, R60Ms, you know, all aspect things. And this is 9.7. You know, as I explained in my top 10 hated vehicles, this thing is on the, well, the, the list primarily because of its over-tiered uh, nature, but more because Galgen can't really focus on a single vehicle now. That is basically impossible. Gone are the days where they could objectively look at a single vehicle and go, yep, that should go up or down, because, well, unfortunate reality is there's over 2,000 vehicles in the game, and they're not going to sit down and, and, and basically look at the how-comes and whys and specifically look at each vehicle in depth because well they obviously don't fucking play their game do they so it's nice to really see some love and some effort put into the game when they have the audacity to ask us to steam vote for them after what they've put us through in the last couple of months yeah where was it um please vote for us for the St steamy awards whatever the hell it was last week and <laughs> people people were memeing the living daylights out of that decision honestly so we have multitude of issues here. The devs don't play their own game. They're fiddling with battle rating changes and obviously not taking data into account when a vehicle is not played at all. Like this particular machine here hasn't been touched since its battle rating change about two years ago. Same with the vampires. When they kill off an aircraft or they kill off a vehicle like that, 
they just basically ensure that it doesn't be played and they go why isn't anybody playing this vehicle anymore in fact i'm pretty sure they don't even ask that question they're just like well you know then more food for the the 9.7 9.3 premiums that we've introduced so really it is a dual sword on one hand you want to be able to sell products and move products but keeping the game fair and balanced is probably the hardest thing gaijin can do and it really just shows as the community's backlash to many of their changes really just shows you how out of touch they are and, and, and really it, it's quite shocking the amount of times other content creators has made videos on battle rating changes on what have they done now and it just goes to show that they're completely just sort of ignoring us just for the sake of doing what they want because they published the br changes that were recent anyway they put up a bunch of vehicles to 8.0 and yet they didn't even touch the su11 slash su9 one of the most offending vehicles in its bracket oh because it's premium you can't you can't up to your premium vehicle fuck out of here how many times have you changed the d13 flight model and the d13 uh sort of battle rating back in the day you you, <laughs> you could never win because people who owned the vehicle paid for the vehicle complained and then people who were versing the vehicle were getting absolutely swamped on back in the day so there is one way to solve this basically expand the battle rating bracket we've asked for 11.0 and 11.3 you've given us 10.3 in some cases 10.7 you may as well just go back to tiers 1 to 20 in terms of a battle rating system and instead of having it actual tiers 1 to 20 uh, like it was in the old days prior to 2014 uh, maybe maybe instead just go to a battle rating of 20 and that way you can expand the vehicles up and down and see how they go and and, and, and go from there and then listen to player feedback maybe that would be a more viable option and there's no turning back the clock on any of these issues either because they keep just spiraling out of control and everybody talks about them every few months because they do these changes every few months and that's kind of a bit of the problem it's almost like they're trying to stir us up on purpose just so they can gauge a reaction and then push what they didn't agree to so i feel sorry for some of the community managers specifically smin who's put his life uh, you know, on the line basically his word on the line to really calm down the community as a whole with vague statements that he provides on the forums as well as giving content creators you know access to strange things that may or may not have been said it really is a, an interesting space to be as a content creator and a community member because on one hand you want the best for the video game and, and you want to th you want that video game to do really well because that means that your channel is also doing really well but on the other hand you can't really focus on the, the positives when there is basically everyone's talking negatively around you so it comes two-faced really and that's the issue you can't please everybody and you're certainly not going to please two sides of a coin uh, that that really just begs an issue is how do you fix this well yeah people have asked for br expansions but people don't want to be waiting in matchmaker for ages and the clear example of that is waiting four minutes for a naval match mind you the map design and, and the way that, that that particular game mode and and the way that naval is designed is completely infuriating it's done that way on purpose so you purchase something and then you know go on with your day because now you've got a premium vehicle um but that's just the game probably designed as a whole the reality is often spoken that if warthunder didn't get free content consistently the game would probably be on its knees and despite the massive success of the 10 year anniversary sales and how much money was spent the reality is free and constant updates is, is really not relevant for a free-to-play game that monetizes through purchasable content in effect what you get is an, well updates that come with heavily monetized content that is introduced over time thus pushing back something that, that in the gamers eyes is called power creep and that's because new features come in and obviously it's completely different strategy to example paid updates in the form of expansion packs what you get is in a convoluted mess that should a vehicle be fifty dollars should anything in this game be fifty dollars should the game have a price tag we've discussed that in further depth and all these sort of issues compound each other and they force each other to have a more negative connotation and a negative experience for the end user overall so if the battle rating system was expanded you'd at least be step one of step five in order to improve the game's virtual statistics and yeah sure a lot of people aren't playing air realistic as much and they're certainly not playing naval uh, but you know where the bread and butter is at the moment for girls entertainment has been tanks for some damn time 
And yeah, you can see that in just the way that people produce content as well as how many people are actually playing, you know, ground forces, because there isn't really a tank game that really does it like War Thunder. So to summarize, because free content means free content, they have to monetize everything else. And battle rating changes and the way that they develop are purely based on an Excel spreadsheet and an algorithm that determines an outcome of any predetermined vehicle. And I know the guy that's running the, the, the algorithm is incredibly smart, but the point is, when you're balancing 2,000 vehicles and you're going by base statistics of, of things, maybe you should actually play the vehicle before you decide to actually change it because oftentimes developers who don't play their games don't have an idea of what the community is talking about and when confronted with two ideals often the community has a different idea of what is happening and the developers have an, a different idea of what, what is happening and the publisher has a different idea of what should and shouldn't be happening so yeah there is that if you have any other thoughts let me know in the comments down below i'd like to think your thoughts on what potentially they could do to really solve battle rating changes as a whole of course, this is an ever-revolving topic, it's something that probably will never change in any of War Thunder's history. But, it's an interesting topic, and I thought I'd dwell on it considering the recent BR changes, and, and, and just expand my thoughts and do a bit of a talking heads video. Featuring one of my least, well, well one of my hated vehicles, even though I've, I've gotten four kills thus far in this match, and I'm about to get a fifth kill. Is he going to pay attention? I don't think he's going to pay attention. Alright, there we go. Fox 2 and Smash. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the members who have joined the channel recently. Uh, you've been supporting the channel. It's fantastic. And thank you for everyone who has bought a decal. Uh, you know, helping me pay bills. And that's fantastic. So yeah, there's that. Stay tuned. There's going to be more content coming over the next couple of days. We're all, if you have any ideas about what I could do or produce four videos, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. My name is Ash. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.